Hello, my name is Edward Cho. I'm a current PGY4 surgical resident at New York Presbyterian Brooklyn Methodist Hospital. I'm here to present our outcomes and experiences transitioning into a high volume pancreatic surgery center over the past four years. According to Bliss et al., high volume pancreatic surgery centers are defined as institutions in which 18 or more pancreatic surgeries are performed annually. Other studies have shown that adverse events such as pancreatic leaks and fistula rates, post-operative complication, and prolonged length of stays are improved at high volume centers. This study reports our outcomes as our hospital transitioned from an urban academic affiliated community level practice to becoming a high volume pancreatic surgery center over the past four years. We reviewed our operative records, post-operative course and early follow-up of 120 patients between um, September 2016 and January 2020. Of note, our increase in pancreatic surgeries was um, increased in October of 2017. During the year prior to becoming a high volume pancreatic surgery center, 17 patients underwent pancreatic surgery at our institution. 14 of these patients underwent a pancreatic duodenectomy or Whipple procedure. As we transitioned to perform an increasing amount of pancreatic surgeries, an additional 103 patients underwent pancreatic surgery within the following three years. 62 of these were um, a pancreatic duodenectomy. All patients with cancer were discussed at a multidisciplinary tumor board preoperatively. Um, this volume actually increased from 20 to 30 cases per year um, prior to our transition to a high volume center to over 100 cases discussed per year. To accommodate for the increased volume of procedures, policies were instituted, including preoperative preparation for complex cases with potential high expected blood loss. In these cases, interventions were institu instituted, such as obtaining appropriate large bore IV access um, preoperatively and availability of blood products rapidly if needed. Transfusions were performed in a one unit PRBC, one unit FFP, and one unit platelet ratio, which is similar to those uh, performed in trauma patients. 14 cases were started laparoscopically, two of which were also done robotically. Seven of these laparoscopic cases were converted to open procedures. Post-operatively, pancreatic fistulas were seen in 17 of our patients, which is about 16.5%, eight of which uh, underwent per percutaneous drainage. Delayed gastric emptying was seen in 10 patients, about a little under 10% and of our patients, all of whom uh, had undergone a pancreatic duodenectomy. Our average length of stay was about 13.4 days. And when five patients with a length of stay of over 50 days were excluded, the average length of stay reduced to 10.8 days. And our observed 30 day mortality was about 2.9%. In conclusion, our transition to a high volume pancreatic surgery center resulted in outcomes comparable to those at other well-established institutions. With the addition of well-trained surgeons and house staff, good pancreatic outcomes should be achievable among similar smaller institutions as ours.